Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And oh my god, Big Hero 6 is awesome. Yes, it is. As you can tell, we just finished watching a very good movie called Big Hero 6. And this is our thoughts on... Big Hero 6, yay! <laughs> this is a really good movie from beginning to end. And the team who does this just keeps getting better. They just keep going. We started with Tangled, then we got Frozen, and now we got this. A kind of converted Marvel property. It's semi-based on a and a comic book series done by Marvel, also called Big Hero 6, but has very little to do with it. Basically, Pixar, who is now Disney, took the license under the Marvel name and ran with it, and they did a fantastic job. Though I'm sure people who are fans of the original Marvel Big Hero 6 could nitpick it for not being close to the original comic. Considering the number of time comic book franchises have been rebooted, I don't think there's really much you can argue about there. And it's just so good. Well, actually, someone could, you're right, but it's so good. Oh, big thing, spoilers. So stop now and like skip to the end. I might put something here. We'll figure it out later. We're just going to talk about the movie now because we are so hyped after watching it. Ridiculously, and I don't think we can blame it on the bag of Chicago-style popcorn that we kind of um, devoured during the movie. Yes. <laughs> oh, just, oh, Beta Max, what a name for a character that awesome. And let's not forget Hiro and, oh, let's start the movie with bot fighting. <laughs> Yay! Oh, by the way, how long did it take you to realize they were just small robots? When I saw the beginning, I was like, yeah, this is either a video game or arena boxing. Yeah, I, I almost immediately, I think it's because of the focus technique they used, realized that these are tiny robots. They're either, like, really small or about, you know, about arm's length big. You know, like we used to have, those big fighting robots with wheels and stuff like that, except much cooler. <laughs> it would actually be entertaining to watch. <laughs> uh, sorry for those who, who, actually may, who actually liked watching those robot fights. I thought they were cool, but they got boring very quickly. And how long did it take you to realize that Hero was playing the poor guy? <laughs> Zero seconds. I've seen previews for this movie, so I know Hero is smart. So basically, Hero's like, oh, uh, can I try? Okay, and so he lost the first fight, but he only put like $2 on the tray, and then the next time he puts this giant wad of cash down. <laughs> yeah, what's re if you pay attention to that, it looks like a kid crumpled up his cash and stuck it in his pocket, so he was playing the guy thoroughly. And then even throwing the extra change on, right at the end before the lid came down. And you look at that robot, you're going, yeah, that robot's designed to fall apart. <laughs> it is not lame. And the nice touch about the flipping the face. The only thing I don't see is, okay, I know it's a big city, but hasn't Hero gotten a rep for playing people like this? <laughs> Especially since he said he was on a roll. Maybe he was just talking that night. Maybe he finally finished his robot and finally got out there. And he's been hitting every game in the city that night. So no, the, there hasn't been time for the word to spread that he is that freaking awesome. Could be, but the way his brother was talking, it sounded like he'd been at this for longer. Mm. Uh, and speaking of his brother, nice brother, but the classic setup of, you get to like this guy, and then we kill him. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like, doesn't that tower look awesome? I remember I remember it back when I was younger. Oh, that thing's getting destroyed. <laughs> mm-hmm. But we have to set up a complex for Hero, because, you know, we have to have a complex for the Hero. Mm-hmm. It's a hero movie. Someone has to die to make it heavy. Yes, because origin stories must be dark. <laughs> and I don't fault the movie for this. It's just, I could even tell by some of the commercials that I think he's going to die. Why do I want to watch this movie? And then I watch the movie. <laughs> oh yeah, this is why I wanted to watch the movie. Wait, I didn't even know this was why I wanted to watch the movie. <laughs> oh... <laughs> This movie is just, it, it, it gets awesomer, and the whole thing of, are you okay? Are you hurt? What were you thinking? <laughs> I know, I love that. Oh, you're fine. I'm going to beat the crowd out of you for being stupid. And I love how they show how it goes through the family <laughs> and where they got it from. Since their aunt pulls it off, too. Mm-hmm. And I lost track of where I was going with this. <laughs> 
I knew I should have bought a parenting book. I love how Hero goes from, yeah, bot fighting, yeah, have fun at your nerd school, to, oh my god, you guys make the coolest stuff, I have to go here. And that's one of the reasons Sadashi is such a cool brother, because he realizes what would get his brother to go to school. And he tricks him into it in the slyest way possible. That whole entire family is genius. <laughs> uh, and then his lab friends. I spilled wasabi on my shirt one time, guys! One time! <laughs> uh, and then there's Honey Lemon and Go-Go and Fred. How does he figure into all of this? Oh, it's because he's rich. And he realized, like, oh, he funds the lab. Because <laughs> we pay attention. He's the one who funds the lab, and no one realizes it until they make it to his house. And then they're like, oh. He even says, I'm a patron of the sciences. And we think he's just going, he's a fan of the sciences. He's moral support. He's the mascot. Of the school, you know? <laughs> and then you realize, oh, he's really rich. <laughs> He is patronizing the school. Why haven't you guys made this man a shrink ray or the ability to turn into a fire-breathing <laughs> lizard at will or an invisible sandwich? Uh, but, oh, oh, wow. And th there's a lot of stuff going on in the movie. And, and if you pay attention, there's some little um, Easter eggs. Like, I love how... The rocket punch haunts and destroy a statue that looks just like him. And it all happened so quickly, I only had time to assimilate that it was a statue and had legs. <laughs> and gratuitous flight scene. That is still... Awesome. <laughs> yeah! I want me a flying robot. Can, can I also have the giant windmills in the sky that power the city? If you don't pay attention enough, you think they're just decorative things, and you're wondering why they're all over the place. But if you look, you realize these are probably windmills. They are energy-generating windmills. <laughs> Which is incredibly awesome, and ties back to something we watched this morning on TV with a soccer ball that actually generates energy. <laughs> yeah, you kick it, you roll it, and... At night, you can use it as your own personal generator. <laughs> and an hour of play equals two hours of charge. So I'm like, I like that. Yeah, I think it may have been three hours. All I know was it was like several times what I'm like, that's efficient. So you run around and you have fun and you can go home and charge your cell phone and have a light on to study. And we're getting off topic, but it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's just that it tied in because... Giant, colorful windmills, so much better than the ones we see on the side of the road. And mostly out of the way, assuming flight patterns and airspace and everything. And I love how you can tell this is a, internally, it's mostly a Pixar team working on it. Because the previews showed you stuff from the movie without really spoiling, at least the early previews, without really spoiling the story for you. It still made you laugh, because the first preview me and you saw showed that scene of him putting on the red version, you know, the version 2 of his suit, but the whole thing pops off in the preview. That doesn't happen in the movie. No, but it gets you to laugh, but it never happens, and it gives you a great feel for the movie without actually spoiling anything. Almost every movie trailer ever. Yeah, and those, those movie trailers were like, well, that was better than the movie. <laughs> I hate those. Uh, so... Yeah, all these guys are kind of crazy, and they... F oh, that's another thing. I love how they show that they are absolutely terrible at fighting this guy when they first do it. Because they have no idea what they're doing. That's rare for a superhero movie. Suddenly, you have superpowers, you know what you're doing. Or you have, like, a very quick sequence of, I learned how to use my powers. I can fight evil now. Yes, well, we have the montage sequence of all of them learning how to use their equipment, all managing to take the mask. The problem is they're all doing it individually. So the plan is to get the mask, but there is no plan of how to stay out of each other's way while you're trying to get the mask. You do have things that can hurt each other. Also, the mask wasn't moving. <laughs> this guy was a moving target and had things moving towards you. So not only did you have it that your objective was moving, you were having to dodge, block, etc. And pay attention to what your teammates were doing, and yeah. So I love how they showed that they learned from that, and they were still learning from that even in the 
quote unquote final battle. Really, the only thing that was fixed in the final battle was that they were more cohesive as a team and that they had agreed on the objective and that Hero had calmed down enough that he wasn't going to kill the guy. And he um, really brought them together. He started becoming an actual leader because he had an actual plan of, wait a minute, these things are being sucked up into the portal when they break off. Oh, <laughs> go for this instead of this. Because, oh, whoopsie, look, you're all out of ammo. <laughs> Did I fire six bullets or five? Do you feel lucky, punk? Well, I do, because I kept count. You fired six. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing in terms of the powers the team has... So Fred basically wanted to breathe fire and be a monster, so there you go. Everyone else's powers were based on the projects they were working on in the lab when Hero first met them. But Hero didn't really seem to give himself anything. He has a protective suit, and he gets to use Baymax as a battle mount. <laughs> I like how you called him a battle mount. <laughs> what else would you call that? Good point. <laughs> Baymax is a fairly sentient robot. He is a full member of the team. Hero's presence isn't necessary for him to function. Mm -hmm. And uh, Baymax is also apparently has a nice learning algorithm in him. He can't. He not only can download data, he can also assimilate data from the environment. I, I like the progression of the story going from him sad to him angry. They actually show all the stages of acceptance. And we actually have him understanding what his brother was thinking when he went back after the professor. And using the same phrase and making it even more poignant because you're going after the daughter of the person who allowed your brother to die. Mm -hmm. And there could have been even been a moment where Hiro gets a chance to tell the guy that my brother died, but you get to have your daughter back because of me. <laughs> I know that's not in his character, but that would have been a cool scene. It would have been a cool scene, but I think it was more subtle and understated to not have him throw it in the guy's face and the look on his face as he sees his daughter go by on the gurney. Yeah, and how he's like, damn it, I made a mistake. Because he could have gone from instead of revenge, he could have gotten the parts together and figured out a way to stabilize the portal and maybe bring his daughter back or look to see if his daughter was still accessible. Because that was new technology. They don't know if she's dead or not. They just know she's not on this plane of existence. All they know is that she went into the portal. You know, that doesn't mean that she's dead. She's lost. They don't know what happened. They don't know if she's injured, if how often had she even gone through the portal. Wait, had it even been tested with live matter before that point? Oh, and I don't know why it reminded me of this, but how long did it take you to realize that it wasn't the evil corporate guy? I was thinking almost from the beginning that it wasn't going to be Cray because it was too obvious. I really wasn't going for the professor until we got the video footage and it became painfully obvious. What I was thinking was that it could be the brother. I actually... Um, right after that moment, I was like, okay, this is either the brother or the good scientist. Because it's obviously not him. He is too obviously the bad guy. I mean, it was way too obvious. I knew he had to be involved. Well, is he funding this guy? Are they working together? Did a deal go south? Yeah, and what's really nice is there actually there's actually clues in the movie before this that if you watch it again you would see them. Well, just the interaction between the professor and Cray when Cray was talking is to Hero. a big red flag. Huge red flag. But they do it in such a way with the emotions on the brother's face that you feel sympathy for the good scientist. That you don't really... You start to feel sympathy, so they're doing a pretty good job of misdirecting you that you're going, well, it's probably not him, but it could be him, but it's definitely not him. I love how it's given to you earlier on, because the professor does say his daughter's name. So when you first hear Abigail in the clip, if you remember the name, you can get it then. Instead of waiting for the movie to point out that Callahan has written on her suit. Yeah, but um, they do it in such a quick way that it's just dropped, and you're like, oh, okay, he's a daughter. 
I completely forgot he had a daughter by the time they actually showed that. And I was like, is it his daughter or his wife? She's kind of young for his wife, but... I know, but as soon as they said Abigail, it triggered for me. And I was like, oh my god, Callahan's daughter. I remember hearing your reaction when that happened. <laughs> it was like, oh. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, she's got it. <laughs> As you can tell, this wasn't Lux's first time watching the movie, but it was mine. What can I say? I like going to the movies. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, and I can't help it. I w I'm, in a, I'm in a chat room with a bunch of guys who watched this movie first. I was like, son of a... <laughs> I have to turn off the chat room every time you guys start talking about this, or I'm going to get spoiled, and I don't want to be spoiled for this movie. <laughs> No, it was very good. I was a little worried when I heard Disney was doing a Sentai movie. I mean, I know The Incredibles turned out pretty good, and we're so many light years beyond where we were when The Incredibles was done. Okay, The Incredibles was more of a superhero movie, you know, American style. And this time I was like, but you guys are really going Sentai? Can I trust you guys to go <laughs> Sentai? And then he's like, it's Pixar. Well, they've never done that before, and then, well, they've done it now. <laughs> I know there are flaws. I mean, no movie is without flaws. And if you want to steal from cinema sense, no movie is without sin. But yeah, this movie is awesome. Any other um things that you were like, hmm, and then, oh! Yeah, at the end where Hero has to disengage Baymax in order for them to escape. And we were both yelling at the screen, why didn't you take the card? <laughs> Take the chip. You can build another body himself. His programming is all in the chip. It's all you need. We've already shown that he can operate without the chip. Mm-hmm. Because when I was watching that, I was saying, I was going, oh my god, grab the chip. <laughs> and then I thought, well, maybe Baymax hid the chip. I mean, the, he knows the fist is going with them. And so when I saw that the chip was in Baymax's hand, I was like, Baymax, you jerk. What? Oh, wait. That's why. Because Baymax's primary function is as a physician and care professional. And forcing Hero to accept and acknowledge loss is part of the grieving process and ultimately leads to him being more healthful. I wanted to say healthy because that's common vernacular. Emotionally, which is the database that he downloaded shortly after being reactivated. And speaking of healthful, flying does make me a better health. <laughs> I know, I love that. It ties right back into the, I don't see how being able to fly makes me a better healthcare professional. I don't see how you don't see that this is awesome! <laughs> and Fred's family. Did anyone besides me look at that family portrait and go, oh yeah, Fred's dad's a superhero? <laughs> I, I actually didn't think that, but I was like, that's Stan Lee. That's Stan Lee. Do you know that's Stan Lee? That's Stan Lee. <laughs> Yeah, I was also going, that's Stan Lee, and I was also going, oh, they're always off on the family island because they're always off doing stuff as superheroes. <laughs> uh, I love how, after credits, oh, speaking of credits, I love how they put the epilogue in the credits, and the little, and the animation style during that was awesome. It felt very comic booky, and it felt like an anime or a manga drawn. I also like the little touch of, Oh, they gave his tape back. That's so sweet. And then the after credits. I love the little touch of Stanley voicing that. And then right after that says, Fred's dad, voiced by Stanley. Just in case we couldn't tell. <laughs> Are you done? <laughs> She's counting on her fingers, folks. I'm not counting on my fingers. I'm going like this. Am I done? Am I done? <laughs> okay, I promise. No more spoiler stuff. We can do the end. <laughs> But wait, there was this one thing? <laughs> <laughs> one more thing! <laughs> <laughs> I was kidding because it was fun. Yes. Uh, well, overall, it was a good movie. If you haven't had a chance to see it yet, go watch it. And if it's not out in theaters anymore for you, the moment it comes out for digital rental purchase, Netflix, go watch it. Download it. Do something. Watch it. <laughs> It was just really fun and beautifully animated, nice storyline, and unlike Pacific Rim, which was also very shiny, with giant robots, you didn't have to turn off your brain. 
you're allowed to think while you're watching this movie. You can think, you can analyze, and it gives you the scope to look at things, interpret, and guess, and be wrong even. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful from beginning to end. We loved it. Even the parts where, okay, I know where we're going, you're still having fun getting there. Mm -hmm. Well, this is Lux. And Ember. And this was our thoughts on Big Hero 6. Also known as us having an outrageous fangasm 20 minutes after watching the movie. <laughs> if you liked my work and want to see more of it, you can go to my Tumblr or my DeviantArt. Want to be kept up to date when new podcasts are posted? You know how YouTube works. Click the subscribe button. Want to keep track of what we're up to, but don't feel left to a subscribe? You can follow us on Tumblr. If you liked my work a lot and you want some of your own, I am open for commissions. If you have any other ideas or movies you would recommend, please put those in the comments. Please be nice. Links in the description.